Pope Francis is coming to America. Lots of people talking about that. And our next guest you will see all over the place. He has been on the show before. His last book was a New York Times bestseller called The Vatican Diaries. He's back with a new book called The Vatican Prophecies. And he's going to be here in St. Louis at Left Bank Books on October 5th. Good morning, John Favis. Good morning. Happy to join you again. You got it. Let's talk about um, exorcisms, because the book, you go into all the different prophecies and the supernatural and all the miracles, if you will, about the Catholic Church. We all know here in St. Louis that the exorcist took place here in St. Louis, but this pope isn't necessarily a fan of exorcisms. Talk about that for a second. Yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, Of course, one of the first things we noticed about Pope Francis was that he talked a lot about the devil. And, uh, you know, he talked over and over about the devil. I mean, people in Rome weren't used to this. And uh, the, the exorcist crowd in Rome, and I, I know most of them pretty well, they grew very excited about this. Uh, Pope Francis was saying the devil is real. He's not a symbol or, or a metaphor. He said uh, he's a, a manipulator. He knows more theology than all the theologians. He will lead you down the primrose path to evil. Um, But it soon became clear that that Pope Francis was not really talking about cases of demonic possession. Uh, You know, his devil was not some devil that makes people's heads spin around or, or, you know, announces his presence with uh, sulfur and smoke. This was a very subtle devil, uh, a devil who leads people into bad habits, like gossiping. And so the exorcists I knew kind of, now they view Pope Francis as, well, he talks about the devil, but it's, it's not quite the same devil that we have to deal with when we're wrestling him to the mat during an exorcism. The book is The Vatican Prophecies, and John Thavis, the idea of the book was what? I, you know, after covering the Vatican for 30 years, I knew that there was one big aspect that people have misconceptions about, and that is how the Vatican deals with the supernatural. And it's mixed messages, really, because on the one hand, the Vatican uh, regularly approves miracles. It's part of the, the process of declaring somebody a saint. So there are, are hundreds or thousands of files of verified miracles sitting in the Vatican archives. On the other hand, when it comes to things like appearances of Mary or divine messages, or say a housewife who thinks God is dictating something new to her, the Vatican is extremely cautious and generally tries to keep the lid on these things, tries to uh, keep publicity away from these types of visionaries and let the dust settle. And that is very problematic in, in this day and age when we have the Internet and, uh, you know, these things can go viral before the Vatican has a chance to investigate them. So there's, there's a, a real tension going on here uh, between the, the Vatican as, as kind of the overseer and the gatekeeper to the supernatural. Let's talk of a couple of these that are sort of out and about in great lore. One of them is the Shroud of Turin. Why is the Vatican so cautious about talking about that? Well, one big reason is that, uh, you know, if it's ever shown to be a fraud, uh, the Vatican doesn't want to have pinned the the people's faith on something that turns out to be false. And uh, so that's why the Vatican has never pronounced one way or the other on whether this really was the cloth that wrapped the body of Jesus Christ in the tomb. Uh, on the other hand, uh, you have a lot of other people who have, including scientists, who, who have argued quite convincingly that there is no other explanation for how this image was made. Scientists have never been able to explain, you know, or reproduce this type of image on a cloth. Uh, I, I remember once when I was traveling with Pope John Paul II on his airplane, and the Pope came back and he was taking questions from reporters. And this was shortly after carbon dating of the shroud, which dated the cloth to the Middle Ages. And so for some people, that meant it's a fake. Uh, for other people who later said, no, that not necessarily because the samples might have been taken from a mended portion of the shroud. In any case, we asked the Pope what he thought, and he said, well, I think it's a relic. And if you say it's a relic, that means you think it really wrapped the body of Jesus. 
And we said, well, what about these scientific tests? And he said, I think it's a relic. And, and then somebody, one of his aides came up and whispered in his ear and said uh, something like, Holy Father, uh, let's not get into science versus faith here. So he turned around and said, the church has never pronounced on this, but I think it's a relic. <laughs> so, this was classic uh, Pope John Paul II, you know, speaking not infallibly, but speaking as, as a believer who, who said for him it's convincing. And, and a lot of ordinary Catholics feel the same way. The book is called The Vatican Prophecies. John Thavis, our guest, and you're going to be in St. Louis on October 5th at Left Bank Books for a book signing and a book reading. Two more things. Uh, what's this miracle about these um, uh, athletes in Wichita, Kansas, that happened all these many years ago. What's the latest on that? Well, the latest is they're still investigating it, but it's just a fascinating story. There was a Catholic chaplain who died during the Korean War in a Chinese prison camp after heroically saving his, his really sacrificing his own life for his fellow prisoners. And he's been revered as a saint locally in in uh, near Wichita, Kansas, for, for many, many years. Uh, and then only recently there was this, this case of three athletes, uh, young people, all of them, all of whom were struck down during athletic competition. I mean, there was a pole vaulter who cracked his head open. Uh, there was a marathon runner who, who dropped dead at the finish line. There was uh, a young girl who was playing soccer, scored a goal, and then began spitting up blood, and this was the beginning of an autoimmune disease that, that you know, left her very ill. In all three cases, the doctors said, these people are not going to recover. They told their parents, prepare for your child's death. And they all three recovered after friends and relatives prayed to this local Catholic chaplain who had died more than 50 years earlier. So the Vatican's investigating this. You know, I went down and talked to all three of them, what is remarkable is that they're all very normal, average people, and, and they're certainly not trying to uh, kind of get rich over, this, over these stories or make themselves out to be celebrities. They're just living their lives. The book is called The Vatican Prophecies. John Favis, our guest, your thoughts on Pope Francis's trip to America. Uh, I think it'll be a wonderful success. Uh, you know, we Americans have a tradition of hosting people very graciously and listening to popes when they come. And that was even true of Pope Benedict, who wasn't the most popular pope ever. Uh, he had a very successful trip. I think Pope Francis is going to really impress people. I don't expect him to pull many punches, but on the other hand, you know, Americans like people who come in and tell it like it is. And uh, he's, he's a pope for the underdog. He's a pope that speaks very plainly. I think he's going to be a great communicator in this country. John Favis, you, uh, have a good uh, trip, and you'll be here in St. Louis October 5th at Left Bank Books signing your new book, The Vatican Prophecies. John, thanks for checking in. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. 758, Frank Ladd in the St. Louis Closet Company.